No, you're totally ready. Action. Austin, take okay. it away. Well, I'm Gloria Kelly, junior in high school, and I'm going to brain science as a major, um, as well as computer science slash engineering for a minor. And so kind of the main question that I'm addressing with this is, why exactly would I choose this? Why would I want to go into marine science? And so, as with any decision, there's always prior experience that would be involved to kind of lead you towards the decision, like Emerson earlier saying about his childhood. And so, kind of on the opposite note, my childhood really didn't have a whole lot that played into it. Because when I grew up down in Georgia, it was always, you're just going to be a cheerleader, or you're just going to stay at home. and be an at-home mother. There wasn't ever like, you could go do math, or science, or architecture, or computer science, anything. And so, really, all I, I had ideas, like at one point a blacksmith for unknown reasons, or a veterinarian, but nothing ever really stuck out until I came to Maine. Now, incoming, there were I immediately wanted to do things. <coughs> I wanted to experience what everyone else up here was. And so the very first thing I did, an in inspiration from my mother, who's a professional musician, is trying music. And so the first instrument I found was a clarinet, and I joined band. And while doing it, I realized that while it was fun, it wasn't something I necessarily wanted to spend my life doing. Like, my mother doing that, perfectly fine, but not necessarily what I wanted to do. So then I kind of came back to the idea of veterinary service, because down in Georgia I had lots of pets, and then coming up to Maine I didn't have them, because traveling with pets can be difficult for them as well as for my sister. And so the more I thought about it, the more I realized the house wouldn't work, just because I'm not comfortable watching animals who are in pain. Like, I want what's best for them, but I, I don't think I'm the right person for that. And so, coming into uh, eighth grade, seventh grade, we were starting to do more with science and kind of exploring what it was like. And so it was suggested by Ms. Hannah, our teacher over at Connors Emerson for science, um, suggested to do the Young Environment the Young Environmental Leaders Program, where we worked to restore the eelgrass beds around the island, and so that kind of took off running. And so the little wooden pallet thing on the right is what we would tie the eelgrass to, so that we could sink them down so that the eelgrass could start to grow under the water without being washed away because the see, the bed had been so eroded from the lack of plant life. Um, and while there, I I start I noticed that it, I really enjoyed working with the marine life and everything that it had to offer. And so I just kind of got more into it. And after that first year, I participated in the program again for that following summer, and then. Summer after that, I was helping out to lead that program and get things such as the wooden boxes prepared for what we would be doing. Well, so that kind of led me afterwards to think, well, what about just regular science? Which led me to going to the Eckerd Sum Summer Science Splash Camp, where they kind of went over every little bit of science that that seventh and eighth graders could understand. So we would do like some basic things with electrical systems, like you plug this wire to a battery into a light bulb and take the other one and do the same thing and it will glow. Very basic things. They also covered a little bit of programming as well where you could use scratch and drag little blocks around to say, when this happens, computer do this, make this thing run across the screen. And so, and the one thing that really stuck with me is the whole chemistry aspect of it as well. So, what we did is, this was the most hands-on thing that they had, was they had 
little flask about this tall that we stuck zinc and a couple other chemicals to cause silver to bind to the inside of the flask. And that was cool and everything. But then they also did the elephant toothpaste experiment, which is so hydrogen peroxide and potassium iodide, which results in something kind of like this, where it's kind of <laughs> lots of fuzzy, hot, soapy bubbles. <laughs> and, and the kind of funny thing about this is that the, the experiment that they did, the, the entire little beaker that they used was this wide. So it shot up taller than the building, and when it came back down, it burned the grass around it. So, sorry, lots of grass died, but it was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, after that, I re I've noticed that yes, I really did like going and participating in science, but in marine science being the thing I wanted to do, but that also leaves me, what would I do for a minor in going off to say college or other things? So I figured, why not try computer science? And so I first at Emerson, or Connors Emerson, tried doing the NXT Lego Mindstorms thing. However, I did their little club thing for two years, but I was never allowed to actually go onto a team. So if you're just kind of using that as a base and coming to the high school, I joined the VEX Robotics. And the picture on the bottom right is this year's competition. Of course, I'm just out of view. Like, you see a sliver of my shirt. But, there, and talking as well, where we had to, um, pick up stars and get them over a fence, and pick up cubes and put them over a fence. And I guess the video's not loading, but it's very faint, but... Yeah, you know, I think maybe if you escape the full screen view, you can probably get it to load? Maybe. I could try that. Oh, no. Okay. No? It's, it's not going to. Okay. Anyway, um... And really all our bot did was kind of slide, slid claws underneath the stars, and using two thumb-like appendages closes around them and then brings them up and over the fence. And that that kind of was a base for what I wanted to experience and deal with. So I wanted to take a step further and so I, at the beginning of last year I had enrolled in the Exploring Computer Science and they dealt with a lot of programming and 3D design where we did things like modeled 3D goat heads, for example, and 3D printed those, which I have to grab out, but I'll show you all in a minute. Um, and so that kept, taking my class kind of solidified that, yes, that's what I wanted to do, and I enjoyed doing it and programming things and seeing that I can apply it to marine science. Like, how are you going to collect data for something that's so far underwater humans can't go, build a probe. And so that's kind of where the computer science thing comes in, because without that, you can't have that device. So that kind of leads to, what am I doing now? What what actions am I taking to go towards this goal? Goal. Um, so first is that I, I am still in robotics, though it's off season right now. Um, I've started participating in the morning announcements so that outside of the programming aspect of things, I can kind of use technology in different things like sound and video to kind of get the experience of running it rather than just programming it. And then also pending continuation of volunteering at the BioLab, because that's what I liked doing and that is, and kind of goes with the saying you are free to make whatever choice you want, but you are not free from the consequences of the choice. So it's just kind of, once you get into something, you're either with it or you're not. And I'm going with it. So it also leaves like, what exactly are my future plans to reach my goal as a marine biologist? And so of course, with many if not all sciences, 
that leads to college. So my first main choice would be Eckerd, which I went to the program with. The building behind here is actually their newest science building where I, where I experienced that camp that I talked about, where we'd go inside and they have 50 million different labs that you could go into and kind of fool with different things. And so, for record, there were, it seemed like the perfect school. Like, they have all the programs that I want, all the different things that I could do. And it seemed like a great school, but the one thing that was kind of a, something that I didn't quite care for much about is the climate. Because although it's great, it's also a bit warm for my taste. But if it is going after my dream and getting to explore the different marine life, then I'm perfectly fine with that. And taking them into consideration, I also have a second college that I'm considering, which is King's University in Halifax, over in Canada. And it's a lot similar to Eckerd. They're both fairly small schools. However, it has a more Maine-like climate to it, being that it's in the Northern Hemisphere. However, the thing that's kind of getting, what makes this school a second choice is that life tends to thrive in warmer climates, and there's more of it, so there's more to study. Whereas in Canada, here, there still is a large biodiversity. However, it's not the best conditions for learning experiences. Because when you're learning, you want to be able to get out and do things and move around as much as you can and learn everything. But if you're in cold water, you could get hypothermia, you have to wear lots of gear and like wet suits or dry suits and all that sort of thing. And I feel like that would kind of impede the learning experience if you're having to learn more about that than the actual animals that you are studying. And here's an older picture that of the school to kind of get a scrape of how big the school is. The main, the center building right there, that's the main building that they have for teaching. And then all along the sides are the housing. So really, it's a very small school considering that's in Halifax. And so that also kind of leaves, what would I do after college? Which is, I decided that I would want to work in a laboratory and kind of collaborate with the community that I would be living in. And so kind of a, mo a role model for this is Jane Disney on the far right, who I worked with at the bio lab. And um, she kind of talked to me about, in interviewing her, what she liked best about her job, which was getting to interact with others and teach them about what she learned about and kind of getting them out there and experiencing what life surrounds them. And I find that that would be very appealing to me because then I could still do research but also kind of give back in knowledge. But that also leads to the question, how am I going to get there? Because while well, I have plans for college and where I would work, what I would do, there's still how would I get there? And so, the main thing is just study and apply to college. So, for example, before I even applied to college, recommended things from Eckerd would be like four years of English, three years of math, three years of lab sciences. And so, once I have all that stuff and I do apply to college, it leaves what would I do once I'm in college to reach those goals, those end goals. And so while I'll be studying marine science, computer science, there's still more experience that you can use to kind of get your feet wet and experience and say, yes, I'm interested in this thing. So that leads me to studying abroad or internships or research assistants that I could do through whichever college I'm going to. And, um, and the more internships and research assistants that you do, the more it shows that you know what you're talking about, you are experienced, and that's kind of something that a lab would look for in hiring you, because they're not necessarily gonna hire someone straight off the bat and say, you're out of college, you can do a research about this important thing. It, everything needs experience, and that's kind of my goal in going towards 
marine science is to say that I am interested and that's what I want to do. So, thank you. Is that the bio lab right there? Yeah. I've never actually been there. Shark tank. <laughs> Questions for Gloria? Um, I know you sort of mentioned this early, but what do you think the like big differences are going to be between studying marine biology and somewhere like here or somewhere like Eckerd where the climate is so different? Well, I think it's more just the ability to have more hands-on time because it's, if anything, it could be considered dangerous to have us out there for hours on end in cold water trying, like studying life or doing it just from a boat. Whereas in Florida, it would be because of the warmer climate, we could go out in the water for hours and do whatever, and we wouldn't have the need for a boat necessarily because everything's just kind of right there. So that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I have to say, when when you mention that it's not a very good climate, and there's a photograph of a gorgeous beach on campus, <laughs> and it's like this out there, I think most of us are probably going like. Wow, that was really nice. <laughs> I'm like, wow, it's all nice and sunny. I just, I, I don't like the heat. I grew up in the warm, humid Fair heat. Fair enough, and yeah. I guess that's partially why I kind of <laughs> like this, is the fact that it's not hot, and you can go outside and not be roasted from the inside out. Right, right. It's funny. Emerson, you're going to ask. Yeah, um, do you have like a specific issue right now that you're interested in, in marine biology? Well, there are a couple, and I've actually talked to people about it today, is one thing Mr. Eaton actually mentioned was that the coral depletion, coral depletion like I believe it was in um, Australia, the coral reef was at 30% down from what it was, and kind of one of the things that's kind of involved with that is the acidity, acidity of the ocean, which is causing the... Um, Coral to undergo bleaching, which kind of strips them of everything that kept them alive in the water environment. Um, so that kind of is one of the main things that's kind of an issue for me, as well as um, conservation of overfished animals, <coughs> such as I believe was the cod around this area where they were overfished and now there isn't very many and they're only just starting to come back. So that's also something that kind of an interesting interest to monitor because while I was doing work at the bio lab one of the things that we did monitor was over in the um, <coughs> over in the over by the Bar Harbor's pier we would take water quality samples and kind of keep track of all of that and the water is unusually sterile from the previous mm -hmm. waste dumpage that's here and as part of the reason that has caused things such as eel grass to die off in our area is because before all the bacteria from the sewage dumpage was like something that would feed the marine life that was involved. And so taking away that food source in the later laws that said that we shouldn't be doing that kind of led to a mass starvation of the marine life in our area. So it's kind of all intertwined and well, aiming for conservation. Well, that's complicated. Yeah. Do you think there would be there was something there before there was? Waste yeah, there was. Just but once you got them dependent on that, you took it away. That's like the main issue. Right, and if you overfish the the uh, what are they called pelagianous fish like cod? Yeah. Um, they would have had their own waste that was in the waterway prior, mm -hmm. but then we removed all the fish. So then that so then they become dependent on the human waste. Right? Yeah. It's complicated. It is. What else? Gloria, you mentioned two schools. Is that it? Yeah, that's you? pretty much it. Because there's one thing that's kind of an aspect that I'm trying to keep into consideration is the price of applying to schools. Because, mm -hmm. like, Eckerd, for instance, is $40 per app application. Mm -hmm. However, if I remember correctly, for like SAT scores, for instance, it was like it was either fifty or two hundred and fifty dollars to send your scores to each college, and that's wow. a bit much, even if it's on the fifty end. So 
I don't know, it was just kind of trying to find the right schools and apply to the right schools instead of sure. having a lot of college that, like, I'm not sure if I want to go there. Right. So. Right. Yeah. What else, you guys? It, have any of you uh, else worked at MEI Biolabs? Is that a common thing for for yeah. island kids to I do? Brandon was yeah, there for my first year. I did the yogurt. Yeah, yes. But every yes. year, um, Mr. Mm -hmm. Costco nominates one kid to. Every year, there's usually one intern at the lab. This yeah. year, it's yeah. Kaylee Weaver. Yeah. Uh huh. And then, uh, but that but that was a middle school program too, right? Yeah. So it's like mostly middle schoolers who would participate in the in the program, and then after that, if you have completed the one or two years, whatever you can get in, yeah. then you help either with the program or you're a volunteer in other areas, such as the Bay Monitoring. Sure. Would you ever consider CRA? Actually, <laughs> I, I came to visit not too long ago, and I decided that it wouldn't be a fit, best fit for me just because while it's a great school and it's very involved, the whole major system, one, is a bit weird, and two, it just gave the vibe of a school that was extremely lax. Like, you're just here, not like studying because you want to have a goal in life. It's just kind of <laughs> 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 vibe. Really I, I don't mean like that, but you, it's like not as serious as I am of a person. <laughs> it's just not a right, it's not the right fit. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, you know, there are a lot of other programs, you guys. That it's interesting um, in Maine how many small programs there are. Yeah. So U Maine has a. Um, uh, and, and it, it was good that you pointed this out because I'm not sure whether it's for graduate school, or, uh, or in Emerson too. You pointed this out or in undergrad, like sometimes people become much more specialized in graduate school. Mm -hmm. But Maine has these programs, so you Maine, like the Darling Marine Center. Yeah. Have you heard of that place? I have. And have you ever been there? No, I haven't. Um, it's down by Booth Bay Harbor, and so if you are, um, <coughs> I guess it would be called Marine Biology, in some schools it's called Ocean, something, is it not Oceanography, or something like that? Um, you, you can actually work at the Darling Marine Center. And there's a guy um, um, whose name is escaping me right now, Bob. And uh, that's his first name, <laughs> Professor. Yeah, my guy. Uh, yeah, his last name yeah, starts with S.T. Um, Ms. McCosker knows him. Um, he is a, his specialty is studying lobsters. Um, and there are, there's a lot of people who are actually doing marine biology there um, about the lobster ecosystem, when you think about that, it's so integral to our economy, mm -hmm. right? Um, it, yeah. And it's like a really important research to be doing. And I, I actually did interview Mr. Hosker about this and kind of tying with the, with the idea of studying abroad. In, Stenic. And so she, she had studied in Mexico to, walk, to observe whales and Argentina for penguins, and that's Definitely something I feel like would help me in the future is being able to go out somewhere, even if it's not here, and experience that that there is more life out there than what I would see now and in this area. Because not everywhere has lobsters or all the different forms of sea urchins or mm -hmm. other life like that. Mm -hmm. I know that you like art a lot. So yeah. how, how are you looking at Incorporating that into your well, life. Well, art, and it kind of goes through music as well, it's kind of a hobby for me. And so, in terms of biology, I'm sure there will be points where I'll be having to draw what I'm doing, and like, this is what this looks like, here's a sketch of this. And I feel like mm -hmm. that, that interest in art will help me with being able to convey the image that I'm seeing to other people through media that is not just photography. Nice. Nice job, Gloria.